a smart, integrated network that helps people connect with each other and their city on the move. It's a goal for many cities today, but the city of Luxembourg started building theirs a decade ago. Joining me down the line is the city's former mayor, Paul Helminger, who launched the Electronic City programme. Paul, what was your original vision for the East City of Luxembourg? Well, quite frankly, my first concern was to improve the efficiency of the uh, city services using the whole gamut of new technologies and information and communications could, uh, uh, could offer. So it meant really looking inside at the city, streamlining the processes, uh, weeding out uh, uh, things that were done uh, in double, really with the, with the idea to, to end up with the city being a sort of one-stop service uh, uh, provider for the citizens. Once we had done that, uh, uh, we, the second idea was to bring this uh, closer to uh, the, the citizen uh, via the uh, via the internet uh, at home first, uh, and then the third stage uh, was to to bring it uh, to where the citizen or the visitor to the city was at any given moment. So, in other words, uh, introduce this concept of seamless coverage uh, of the city as a hotspot, which then became hot city. So, why was this ultra modern connectivity important for the city, its citizens, and businesses? This city is, is quite an extraordinary city, fully 65% uh, today, more than that, of, of its residents do not hold Luxembourg passports. In other words, we are living in a city that is very multilingual, that is very mobile. Uh, we double in size during the day with all the commuters coming in to, to work. So um, the, the, we, we have this, this need to connect uh, to the citizen, to the visitor in ways that, that use the full uh, power uh, and availability of, uh, of the internet. So it makes the city much more, much more livable. Uh, it gives the citizen an idea of how to move around the city, uh, where things are happening, information about uh, events, uh, live transmissions of, uh, of events, regardless of uh, whether he is at home or whether he sits on a, on a cafe terrace. So that, that is the idea. And I think in the meantime, we've come very close to realizing that. How much did the initiative cost and how did you get support for it? Well, <laughs> uh, let me say that the investment in the platform and uh, in, the, uh, in, in the network, which we really insisted should be uh, in, the, in, in the hands of the, uh, of the city, it, it has cost us a couple of million over the years. And where did the support for the network come from? I think it started with our services uh, themselves. Uh, who suddenly were able, if they were at some at their workplace somewhere in the city, to be able to uh, to to on the spot uh, reach out to the files which they had left uh, at the at the office. So they realized that their their own work uh, had become uh, much more efficient. And of course, we saw that on the uh, on the cost side. And then for the citizens them, uh, that themselves. The idea that they would be uh, be able uh, to sort of buy their bus tickets, find out exactly when the next bus uh, would come, uh, where there would be an empty uh, parking space. All these things, of course, uh, make life uh, of, uh, be it now the citizen, the resident or the visitor of the city, uh, much more, much easier uh, and, uh, and, and make therefore the city much more attractive. So the response, I think, was, uh, was really very good. What role did the private sector play in the eCity program? We had been looking uh, before we launched this uh, at, at sort of what uh, other cities or what had happened around the world. And we found cities had, had, that had really gone to private operators and uh, entrusted a private operator with building uh, similar systems. And we found cities uh, that had wanted to do it uh, uh, all, all of their own. Uh, we kind of came to the conclusion after this sort of benchmarking that uh, one thing was important, that uh, we would uh, uh, set up a, a network and a platform that would be open. And the one way to guarantee that was to, uh, to, to have the city as the owner of both the platform and the network, but then to make sure that that platform was open so that all service providers, whether they be in telecommunications or internet services, uh, would be able to use that platform. Now, we have one strategic partner because we obviously needed sort of a kickstart, but the, the basic idea was to make sure that we had an open platform, an open system where all telecom and all service providers could join. And that also has proved to be a big success. So finally, you said you looked at how other cities were doing it. Cities today looking around, thinking they want to develop their own e-city e network. 
What advice would you give to them? Well, I think it is exactly that, that they should make sure that their system is an, uh, is an open system because that is what encourages providers, uh, people that have ideas about new, new applications, uh, new services to offer, to come to you and ask to be part of the, uh, part of the ecosystem that is today uh, Hot City. Paul, thank you. Thank you.